and uh, welcome to an unboxing and setup video. In this one, we're going to be looking at this rather impressively large box set from Hornby. Now, this is the celebrating 100 years of the Flying Scotsman double gauge train set, and its catalogue number is R1255. Now, in the box, we're going to get a railroad version of the famous locomotive and free coaches. Now, this uh, is an, designed as an extensible track system, so you can start with a basic oval and uh, add bits as you go along. And for this particular set, we end up with a basic oval and a siding. Uh, so we get the track mat, starter oval, and track pack A. So let's have a look on the reverse of the box and see in detail what we actually get here. Okay, so first of all, as you can see, you can build it up along these systems here. Now the basic oval, that comes with two standard straights and eight third radius double curves. Next up, also included in the box, is track pack A. This uh, adds on a siding by including a standard straight, two double straights, a left hand point, a second radius standard curve and a buffer stop. Now, what we also get here is the track mat. Now, this is a very large track mat, it's actually 180 by 120 centimetres, uh, so unfortunately it doesn't actually fit on any of my tables. So in true Sam's Trains style, we'll be uh, doing this on the carpet, just as a temporary measure, we don't recommend it. Okay, so we've now uh, removed the pop tray from the outer packaging, and as you can see up here in the top left, we have the rather fine model of the Flying Scotsman. Now we'll look at that in later detail once we've got our track up and running. And of course we get three teak coaches to go with the locomotive. Now regarding the track, we have here three standard straights, one of which comes with a power clip, which we'll be attaching later to our power controller. We get our oval of uh, eight third radius curves. And we get two double straights here for the main running lines. Now underneath here we have the, the left hand point and the associated curve that allows us to uh, add a siding to our layout. Now power wise we have here a standard Hornby basic controller. This uh, comes with a power plug and a means to connect it to the electricity supply. And lastly we have a buffer stop to go with our siding and we get a little plastic ramp railer to allow us to easily place the carriages and the engine onto the track. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at the track mat, which is located under the pulp tray. Let's see what we can find over here. Okay, so here we have a plastic pack full of leaflets and our track mat. So just open this up and uh, let's get them out for you. Okay, so first of all we have a, a small leaflet describing the extension packs, uh, Hornby geometry, and on the other side accessory packs and buildings, so things you can add to your layout. Uh, next we have uh, operating and maintenance instructions for the locomotive. In fact, two of these. Uh, advert to become a member of uh, the Hornby, the collector club. A leaflet to go with the train controller. And a an maintenance and operating instructions uh, leaflet to go with the locomotive in this set. So in here, we uh, take a look, open this up. So basically we have information about how to do baseboards, how to put uh, uncoupling ramps on, another fine picture of the, of the full set, and information about uh, track and points. On the other side we've got connecting the power, uh, operation and maintenance tips, and information about uh, using points. Uh, we've got two trains. Okay. Finally, we've got a product range brochure 
This one's from 2022, so uh, certainly out of date. But uh, basically gives you information about uh, all the trains in the range. That's a railroad, track packs and accessories, uh, buildings, uh, information about train sets, more buildings, and information on the, the track geometry system that uh, Hornby uses. And on the other side, we have uh, extensive information about steam locomotives, uh, the older style Hornby Bluetooth app for train control, diesel and electric locomotives, and the many coaches that can be purchased. Okay, and finally we have our track mat here. Now, as you can see, this is looking like it's going to be quite large. So let's go and put this down on the carpet. Okay, so here we have our uh, track mat down on the carpet. Now obviously it's looking a bit creased because it's been folded into a plastic bag for quite a while. Uh, but typically if it's a plastic track mat, you would uh, stick it with adhesive tape onto a baseboard and if your set comes with a paper one, then you would uh, typically uh, use some sort of PVA glue to give you a nice flat surface to lay your track. So let's start by doing the curves. So this set comes with third radius curves. You need four of them to uh, make a half circle. Uh, so we would uh, just join them like this, get both lined up and connect them together. There we go. And put it down on our mat. Okay, so here's our half circle of four third radius curves, and we'll put that down onto our track mat. Now, carrying on around this section here, you'll see the next bit on the mat is a level crossing. Now, we don't have one of those, so what we're going to do is put three of the shorter straights there, one of them being the one with the power clip. So, here we are, this is the, the power clip track and we'll put one of these either side of it so as uh, not to obscure the level crossing. Uh, clip these all together. There we go. And put that down onto our track. Now, for the far end over there, what we're going to do is uh, put in a siding. We'll take our left hand point and the curve, join them together. Okay, and we're going to put a straight here and a straight here. And one for the main line. And we'll just clip that into there. And that can go at the far end of the layout. So now we just have the four final third radius curves to put into position. Uh, here we have them here. We'll just join them together as before and place them over on that side of the layout. And then we're ready to start applying power. Okay, so now we have all the track laid on top of the mat. At the far end we've got the siding and down here we've got the, the clip to uh, attach our power controller. So let's get the power controller out and plug it in. So here we have your basic entry level Hornby controller. As you can see it has a dial for speed, minimum to maximum, uh, direction setting, forward and reverse. Uh, note that uh, this only operates when the power is turned down. You can't switch direction while the train is moving. Now on the, the rear of the controller, we have an input for the AC adapter that we'll see in a minute. We have some power outputs for accessories like uh, signals or LED lighting, if you have any of those. And there's also a high-low setting here. Now in normal operation, you would set that to high. But if you want to restrict the maximum speed that uh, can be selected, set it to low and that will adjust the thresholds of the speed dial. Now on the end here, we have the, the connection which goes into the power clip. So we just 
just clip that in there like that. And finally we have the AC adapter that plugs into your electricity supply and the round connection goes into the back of your Hornby controller. So I'll just uh, plug that in here. Put the track there. And finally we connect up the power supply to our extension lead here. And there we go. Okay, I've uh, plugged in the power and everything's ready to go. Now obviously we need to test the tra track first, so here we have a little uh, network rail shunter. Let's place this onto the track. And uh, ensure we are going in the forward direction, which is to the left, and apply power. And there we go. On this controller you have to dial down the power to zero before you can change direction. So click it over and uh, off we go again. Obviously we need to test the point. Points over and off we go. Our train is successfully in the siding. Now the siding would not be complete without a buffer stop added. So let's go and add a little buffer stop to the end of the siding. Just uh, clips onto the track and uh, that's it complete. Now it's time to take a look at our locomotive and coaches. So first off we have the, the Flying Scotsman locomotive here. Now let's uh, slide this out of its casing. Comes with a small bag of accessories, uh, different couplings, some chains. Now in this uh, clamshell casing, we just uh, undo this here and open it up. And here we have our first look at the livery of the, the locomotive. Now we can take that out and remove the packaging. And here we have our first look at the Flying Scotsman locomotive and it's tender. Now the tender has a big lump of rubber here which uh, I assume has to be removed otherwise uh, it won't be able to go around tr corners. So we'll just uh, take that off. Now here we have our coaches. One, uh, the first one here, this is our third and first class. And the final coach, which is uh, tricky to get out, is a, a brake van with a third and a first class accommodation. Okay, so. Let's get them down onto the track and see how they look. So Flying Scotsman is all ready to go down on the track along with the coaches. So uh, let's get the camera into position and off we go. Flying Scotsman, are you ready for your first trip? And we're off.
So just to show you how easy it is to add things to your track mat, I've picked a few spare items from our main layout. Here we have a, a camera van, a network rail van, a sports car, a small level crossing and a bit of a platform. So what we'll do, we'll add those to the layout and uh, see how it looks. Okay, so I've added in our single track level crossing. That's the, the only spare one I have at the moment. Over here we put a little car and our network rail van is on the other side of the layout. And we put a little station platform over there. Strangely, the outer track on this track mat has no station. The track mat comes with uh, placeholders for a branch line station in the middle of the layout, accessed from the inner loop. So here we are at the end of the video. As you can see, the Flying Scotsman set is uh, very easy to set up and get running and offers a lot of expansion options with uh, the various track packs and buildings, stations, all sorts of things you can add by visiting your local model shop. And finally, I'd like to thank you for watching this video to the end. I hope you find it interesting. Why not subscribe to our channel? We've got uh, literally hundreds of model railway layouts to watch and hopefully to inspire you taken from around the country at Model Railway Exhibitions. So, thank you once again. Goodbye.